Okay, but um, in many situations, we, we don't actually have an equation that's nice and neat for this. What we do have is at particular points in time, we just measure, we observe. Like if you did an experiment, right? You were watching someone's, you know, you kept on taking blood samples and you saw how much bacteria did they have after one hour, two hours, three hours, okay? You have no derivative, you've got no equations, so you can't find out either of these things. But you can actually take some measurements over time and compare, say, for example, this time to that time. And you could see, all right, instead of a tank, you're going to get a secant like that, a chord, I should say, because it ends, right? And as opposed to our tangent here, this chord or this secant, they're both the same thing in this context. Uh, it doesn't represent at a specific point in time. It represents over a uh, course of time, right? Which is why we call it, rather than instantaneous, we call it the average. Does that make sense? Okay, so think about it this way. If I wanted to know how, f how high this was increasing, right? How, how steep it were. How would I work this out if it was just, you know, a graph and I was just after its gradient? What would I actually do? How do you work out the gradient of a chord? I would need two pieces of information, right? I would need to work out gradient. If I've got two points, right? I'm going to need the rise, and I'm going to need the run, both of which I can get from the coordinates, right? So I'm going to find out rise, and then I'm going to find out run, and then I'm going to divide. That's all I have to do, okay? But think, think, think. On an exponential growth situation, okay, what is the horizontal axis? What is that axis usually? That's usually the time axis, right? So you've got like a time that you start, time one, and you've got a time that you end, time two, okay? And then what's the vertical axis? If I was talking, I've been talking about bacteria this whole time, right? So the vertical axis might be the population of bacteria. So you have the population at a certain time and the population at another time. The initial one and the later on one, okay? So if you're trying to work out an average growth rate over this period of time, all it means is the gradient. And you just need these pieces of information to, to put them into. You're going to get rise out of this and run out of that. Okay? So instead of writing y2 minus y1, which is what's normally wrong color, which is what's normally on the top of my fraction here, what would be in place of y2 and y1? Have a look. Yeah, it's your population at the later time, and you're going to compare that with the population at the earlier time, right? There you go. So that's going to be the rise. What about the run? Have a look. Look at where you start, where you end. How do you find out that horizontal distance? Yeah, it's your later time to take away your earlier time. So this is just right here. In fact, I might even put that there just as a reminder. Like I said, it looks like a really awkward sort of thing to remember. Don't remember it, just remember that it's gradient, and then you'll get the right information out of it. Okay. Now, this would be an absolute growth rate. It's like, oh, over that time, it was, it was a, that gradient gave me 300 bacteria per hour. Okay? But if I want that in a proportional way, what if I have lots more bacteria or lots less? Okay? You're going to do all the same things. You're still going to work out this rate. This right here. Now, don't write what I'm about to write, just watch it. Have a look. If, look. Don't write this bit because, as you're going to say, it's an awkward way to write it, and I'm going to write it in a neater way, but I want you to understand what I'm actually doing. All you would do is you take this rate and you would compare that whole thing to whatever your starting population was. Okay, you see how awkward this is as a way to write? Okay, but that's what you're doing. Okay? So for example, if I, I was just talking about the fact that, oh, you grew um, 300 new bacteria, 300 bacteria over the course of this hour, right? Is that, is that a lot or is that a little? Well, it depends on how many bacteria you started with, yeah? Does that make sense? Like suppose I had a million bacteria in my body, and this is how fast they grew. Would that? Would you describe that as fast or slow? Super slow, right? Like 300 out of a million, that's really slow. But if I started with 300, that means they've, over the course of the hour, they've doubled. That's pretty fast, right? Or what if I started with 10 bacteria? Oh no, they've got 30 times more over the course of the hour. I'm in some real trouble, right? 
So in other words, if you compare it to your original amount of bacteria, that's what gives you a sense proportionally about whether this is this is fast and you're in some serious trouble, or this is slow, your immune system will take over this. Okay? So like I said, I didn't want you to write it like this because that awkward fraction on a fraction. What would be a simpler way, once I simplify this, where would that population of, at T1, where would it go? It just, it just goes on the denominator, yeah? So I think a simpler way to write it is this. It just ends up down here, doesn't it? Population at time one. Like that, okay? But the reason why it's there is because you're dividing that entire absolute average growth rate by the population that you started with to tell whether is it happening fast or is it happening slow. Well, it depends on that guy. Okay. Um, just one more thing when you have a look at the board. I forgot to fill it in. The difference between absolute and proportional is you're comparing to the entire population. And if you have a big population, that will mean, oh, you know, I need to have a big growth rate for it to be accordingly fast. So when you think about K, you can actually think about it through the same lens, that it's a rate, but you divide it by however much your population is. Okay? Here's the way I'm going to show this. This might be your equation for a population, population at whatever time. But we can get a differential equation out of this, and often, you've been doing these questions already, the first thing you have to prove is that this guy satisfies a particular differential equation. Do you remember what it was? dp on dt equals what? K. K times P, right? Okay. Now, what this means is if I rewrite this just a teeny bit, sorry I'm running out of space a little bit, I could write that as P dash equals KP. Yeah, do you agree with that? That's just a, a reframing of what dp on dt is. Now, have a look at this equation and tell me what K is, what K is on the basis of this equation. When you change the subject, you have to do one operation. What do you do? I've already differentiated, I've already got it, right? If I just want k, just k, all I have to do is divide by the population at a given time, right? Doesn't that look familiar? It's the same deal, right? So do you see how over here what you've got is a gradient, either at an instant in time or over a period of time. And then to turn an absolute growth rate into a proportional growth rate, you just divide by well, how big's your population? Is it a big one or is it a small one? 